Okay, welcome. In this video, we're going to walk through several examples of how to use chart schemes in WinSPC. A uh, chart scheme is where you can set all of a chart's visual elements. Just about every property of a chart display is configurable, and once the scheme is created, it can be applied in many places throughout WinSPC, such as dashboards and reports, analyzer tools, and in other areas. We're going to start by going to the Tools menu and selecting Chart Schemes. This is where you have all the setup options to manage the chart properties. We're going to go through these examples and then we'll show you the end result inside of Live Dashboards or Variable Analyzer. To start, let's browse through a few options and you'll see a preview of the chart display to the right. So the default is the first view that you're seeing now. Let's select some of the other options. The always popular oscilloscope. You notice some of the background color changes on that one, along with ocean or forest. So several of these default schemes are built in and ship with WinSPC. That might help to, uh, to test those out on different size screens or maybe in different lighting conditions out on the shop floor to see if certain color schemes work well in your environment. Other options that I've already created in here were personalized for specific use cases. This one here just has spec limits, for example. Or maybe you want to show some of the bands on the chart according to the spec limit or control limit zones with the red, yellow, green shading. I'll just touch on a few others. And you get a feel for some of the properties that can be modified. Let's stick with this one for a moment, and then we'll start to browse through some of the other settings. So the schemes are configured by chart categories, and currently I'm on line charts. And just below that, you see a row of tabs where you can interact with the different properties and settings. So you could choose different categories to adjust those settings per chart type. So let's stay on line charts for a moment. Right away, you notice that this one was customized to just have the variable name. Some of the other options might include the part or station, the user, or you could just type in your own and call it whatever you like. You can also set fonts to adjust the sizing. Maybe you want to increase the size of the, of the name on the chart itself. I'm not going to go through all these, but you can see some of the background color options, different elements for visibility. which limits are shown. And then exploring some of the other tabs, you can see where the axis could be changed, some of the chart properties, including the number of data points. Maybe you want to pre-select 20 or 50 or 100 data points to be always shown on the chart, and then allow the scroll bar so the user could scroll backwards if they needed to see previous historic data. There's an option for the visible element of the chart label, which is here in the top left, as well as the limit visibility, which, which of the limits are to be shown, and to the right, even adjusting the colors of those items. For line charts, there might be reasons you want to show a histogram along with that, and when that option is selected, you could set the coloring of the bins within the histogram. We also get requests to change visibility of the data points on the chart, including both the subgroup or the samples. And there you could turn those on or off. These are fairly light in color, so you could change it from aqua to something else. And those represent the individual samples within the subgroup. last option here is for the zone bands that I showed earlier, where you could have red, yellow, green elements added to reflect the different control limit or specification limit zones. And those could be colored different ways as well. Moving on to Pareto's, some common options here with background colors, which elements are visible, changing the colors of the bins, 
and the line that's shown up above. Same thing with histograms. And a similar style layout with the pie charts. Looking at coloring on the individual wedges can be done from this tab, where you can choose a random or a specific gradient of shading. So as you go through these, you can experiment to get the right colors, sizing, the displays, the fonts, the labeling, and then use that in different areas throughout Windows PC. And now we could access that scheme. For example, we could go in and quickly create a new dashboard and apply that particular layout. To simplify things, I'll just use a single variable dashboard, and we'll just add a single chart to that. It's defaulting to an X-bar and R, which you could change here. Once you've chosen the specific chart type, you can also change the scheme. So all those same schemes you saw a moment ago are accessible right from this dropdown. And we should be able to find our chart scheme there. So now anytime a user runs this dashboard, they'll be able to view this chart with those same visual elements preset ready to go. I've experimented quite a bit with setting the, uh, the chart sizing, the axis, the labels, even the legends to the right to be able to get more charts on screen. And with several of those chart scheme settings, you can make it optimized for a particular chart matrix view. For example, if you have 50 or 75 or more charts on the screen, you want to minimize what items are on the chart to simplify the view for the end user. Just a thought on that. And then lastly, let's wrap up here looking at an example within variable analyzer. So I'm drilling into one variable. We'll go to the chart tab. And with a right click, you can also toggle between chart schemes here. Maybe you get down to a specific type of view that you like to use on a regular basis, and you can choose that scheme here. But these same schemes are accessible in, in dashboards, reports, the analyzer tools, and in version 10, also in data collection. Look forward to that soon. That's all we had planned for today. Thanks for joining.